AMD 5000 is amazing. I think every single YouTube video out there says this. I don't think anybody out there is like, oh, huh, Intel's better or whatever it might be. What I didn't expect is Linux to score so high right out of the gate because there's some optimizations to be done on this. And as I installed the latest and greatest kernel, I went ahead and compiled a 5.10 kernel because there was a lot of AMD stuff in there, but not just any kernel, something that was a little special. And the results were already phenomenal on the old run, but with the new run and with the new kernel, I'm just beside myself. So let's get on the desktop because I have to show you all these benchmarks, what they show, what the results are, and what the future holds for the actual compute power of this processor on Linux because I got to say, it's impressive. So first off, what am I using for 5.10? And I'm using Linux TKG. And if you're not familiar with TKG, he's actually makes a lot of gaming-esque Linux stuff. Whether it's fixes or patches for the official Proton, he does it all. This guy's amazing. Uh, goes by the name TK Glitch. Just blown away by all his contributions to the Linux community over the years. But this one right here, I've never used his custom Linux kernel until today because if I look down here, he has the 5.10 release candidate. And of course, if we come over into our terminal, I went ahead and installed that TKG Linux kernel. The install process was a lot easier than I thought as well. If you're interested in installing this kernel, just know you come to his GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. If you're on Arch, you just do this. And if you're on Debian, you do that. It's three lines either way. You can't really go wrong. I will say on Arch though, when I tried to install it using this method, it didn't actually install the kernel. I actually had to go back in and do what's called a sudo pacman dash uh, u and then the actual package names. And if you're interested in that, let's say you just do a sudo pacman. That's actually what I actually ended up doing in the cloned repository. So if I clone the repository, I made the packages. And then after they compiled, I went ahead and had to run this command after that one. But you probably won't need to do that on Debian, which was what probably most people watching this video run. But if you're on Arch, know that extra command uh, got me through. But with that said, let's get over on the actual benchmarks and show you the numbers between 5.9, which I was using Zen, which is a custom kernel as well, to 5.10. Okay, here's my PTS result viewer. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down here. I had to rename some stuff just to make sure it all lines up. But here's what we're comparing. We're going 5600X 5.9 and the 5600X 5.10 release candidate to TK Glitch Edition. And this is a pretty big uptick. Just in one sub-revision of the kernel, going from just 5.9 to 5.10, yeah, TKG probably comes up, uh, has a leg up on Zen anyways, but this is some pretty big numbers as far as a jump on a subversion, and definitely worth doing if you're on Linux right now and you have a 5000 series processor. I would go ahead and upgrade to 5.10, even in release candidate, candidate uh, form because of the performance uptick, but also because you can actually read the temps. If you look at my live stream, you'll notice during that live stream, it never read the temps on my CPU at all. So I had no idea what my thermals were. Well, no longer 5.10, it shows my thermals as you can see here. You can see GCC compile almost a full 10%, actually a, probably a little over 10% improvement here. Blender, much of the same, about a 5% uptick, which is awesome. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, about the same. This one is kind of a, a test or a, kind of like a placebo, if you will, because my RX 580 is the bottleneck in this test. It only utilizes about 20% of the CPU and the GPU itself is really bottlenecked in this test. So seeing them neck and neck is about to be expected. And then down to open arena, you can see a substantial average frames per second uptick, almost another hundred frames just in one subversion over to TKG, 
which is phenomenal. And you can see that also in the frame times as well, as there's no outliers over here, you can see the frames would uh, not be nearly as close and tight as the TKG kernel. This is definitely worth doing based on these benchmarks. I am floored by how well this is performing. And again, go over to TKG. What are you waiting on? If you got a 5,000 kernel, you owe it yourself to at least try this. Don't uninstall your old kernel because if something does happen, you should probably revert back. But having this extra one in here right now with the 5000 series, I'm just going to keep rocking it until the actual stable release comes through because this is something to really write home about. But with that said, what are your thoughts? Is this about what you expected based on what you saw elsewhere? Me personally, again, can't believe it. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the description or the comment section. I keep saying description. I guess I should always be putting stuff in the description, but a lot of times I forget. Again, oh well, I'm just happy that this all worked out and just am floored that one, I was able to actually stand in line and get the chip and two, being able to actually see the results before my eyes and not just having to trust some random dude on YouTube. Oh, I guess I am some random dude on YouTube. Well, just know. Here's one more random dude on YouTube telling you this AMD 5000 series is amazing. And that's where I'm going to end it. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.